had a chance to play around with Math Playground's pan scale to figure out how to isolate X and figure out what it's worth, how much it weighs. Um, now we're gonna try a different strategy. We're still gonna use John's mystery number and we're going to use something called backtracking. Backtracking means, have you ever lost something? Have you ever lost something? You're like, oh my gosh, what did I do with my phone? Oh, I had my phone just now, where did I do? And you backtrack. You think, okay, well, I was in the kitchen. No, it's not there. And you walk into your bedroom and you're like, no. Oh wait, I was using it on the toilet or something. And you go into the bathroom and there it is, it's on the counter. <laughs> I left it, I left it in there. Backtracking means you go back. You start from where you are now and you backtrack your way to the beginning. Okay, that's exactly what we're gonna do with John and his riddle, all right? We're gonna backtrack. Now here's how that works. John made a riddle for us and we'll, let's review it real quick. He said, here's my mystery number. I multiplied it by three. Then I added a negative one to it and that resulted in a negative four. Backtracking says we're gonna start with the result and go backwards to figure out what his mystery number is. So let's try that. But the first thing we need to make sure we know is that if we're going backwards, that means we need to do exactly the opposite of what John did to make his riddle to figure out the answer to his riddle. So keep in mind that word opposite because every operation that John did, we're gonna use the opposite operation, the inverse, all right? So let's start with what we have. Let's start with what he ended with. And if you think about how he did it forward, <clears throat> first he multiplied and then he added. Well, we're going backwards. So we're going to look at this and we're going to subtract negative one, okay? This was the first step in the backtrack. We started with what he ended with and now we're moving this way to adding negative one. But we're not gonna add negative one we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna do the inverse, and we're going to subtract negative one from the result. Okay with me so far? So let's do negative four minus negative one. Since we're subtracting a negative number, we definitely wanna add the opposite, right? So we're gonna add a positive one to negative four, and that will give us negative four they're both different signs, so we're gonna subtract their absolute values, that's three, and keep the sign of the bigger absolute value. So here's where we are now. Now we're gonna take this, negative three, and the next thing he did was he multiplied x by three. So we're gonna do the inverse of that. We're gonna do the opposite. We're going to divide. He multiplied, we're gonna divide. Does that make sense? So negative three, divided by three, three divided by three is one. Keep the sign, well, multiple division says negative divided by positive is negative. So that means using backtracking, we think John's mystery number is negative one. Now, if you think back to the first lesson that we did, the first video on the pan balances, that's what we got too. So it looks like this strategy works okay. You ready to try another one? It's not too difficult, right? <clears throat> Just remember that you're going backwards and you're using opposites. So then my friend Sarah comes up and she says, okay, I have, I have a mystery number, okay? Here's my mystery number. You don't know what it is. And I'm going to multiply it by four. So that's four X. And then I'm gonna add five. And when I do that, the result is 25. Okay, here's Sarah's riddle. We're gonna use backtracking to figure out what her mystery number is. So we're gonna start with where she ended and we're gonna go backwards. So if we go backwards, she added five, which means we're gonna do what? the inverse, we're gonna subtract five. 25 minus five is just 20, okay? So here's where we are now. 
and she multiplied four by her mystery number, or she multiplied her mystery number by four. So we're gonna do the opposite of that. We're gonna do the inverse of that, and we're going to divide by four. 20 divided by four is five. So far, we believe that her mystery number is five. Can we be sure? Well, in the last video, we checked our answer. Remember that? We took this expression, and instead of the unknown, we put what we think it is and see if these two are worth the same. Okay, see if they're the same number. So let's do that. Let's check to make sure that this is five. Rewrite this expression, but instead of x, we're gonna open it up and plug in what we think her mystery number is, and then rewrite everything else. Remember, we're not doing anything to this side because there's just a number sitting there, so we don't have to worry about that. We just need to simplify this side. Order of operations tells us that between multiplication and addition, we have to do multiplication first. So four times five is 20. Bring down the plus five, and we can already pretty much see that this is gonna work out. Backtracking, it's pretty easy, right? Do you wanna see one more? Let's try one more. Dylan thinks of a number, and he says, I'm gonna multiply it by three and subtract five. And when I do that, my result is seven. Okay? One more time. We start with where he ended, and we start going backwards. He subtracted five, so we're gonna do what? We're gonna add five, okay? And that gives us 12. Start a new line. So we're done with this part. Now he multiplied the mystery number by three, but we're going to divide by three. We're gonna do the inverse operation. 12 divided by three is four. So, so far we think X is four, okay? Let's check that, let's make sure, let's prove it. We're not gonna do anything to this side because it's just seven, it's just a number. But this side we're gonna rewrite but instead of, I don't know, we're gonna put in our, what we think it is, what our math showed us it is. Backtracking showed us that X is four, and then rewrite everything else. Okay? Order of operations tells us to multiply three times four first, and then subtract. Ta-da! We did it! Backtracking works, and it's pretty easy. And actually it gets us ready to follow the actual algorithm, the actual process of trying to solve for X because backtracking is exactly what we're gonna be doing in the next video. But first, you guys are ready. If you would like to open up your exercises underneath this, uh, underneath the, this video, and you are ready to do the try it section and the think about this section. However, Underneath that, it says three, and it's a practice section, session. If you would like to save that until you watch the next video, that's totally understandable. If you feel comfortable trying to go ahead and use the inverse operations, you can try it. But I have an actual systematic way, a systematic step-by-step -step method to follow to make sure that we stay nice and clean and actually gets us ready for more complex algebra. So. We've done the pan scale. Hopefully that illustration helped you out. We did backtracking, which is an awesome method. Next, I'm gonna talk about solving for a variable using inverse operations. So go ahead and try sections one and two in the exercises. Come back and watch the video underneath, and then you can go back up and do section three, all right? Good luck with that, and I'll see you on the last video.